When we talk about MediaTek, the first thing coming to mind is probably some low-end and mid-range smartphone chip. I mean, they don't even have a proper flagship chip in their lineup. And most of the time when we talk about high-end product, MediaTek just outperformed by Qualcomm. But now, things are different. The new Diamond 39000 is a true flagship SoC made by MediaTek, and it will be a direct competitor of Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And lucky enough, we received an engineering prototype from MediaTek so we can play around with it, do some benchmarks, and test everything out. Well, what you are about to watch is an exclusive first look of MediaTek Diamond 39000. This engineering prototype we receive is pretty much a bare bone. You have no working cameras, explosive connectors, and those screens have some super large bezels. Apparently this will be a very different one from uh, retail phones, let's say. And while the prototype seems pretty huge, it's not having a proper cooling solution. No heat pipe, no vapor chambers. So the test we can do today is pretty limited. But still, we can take a peek at its CPU, GPU, gaming performance, and most importantly, power efficiency. And as always, we have to talk about its architecture first. Without a doubt, the Dimensity 9000 is the most high-end SoC that MediaTek has ever made. The core architectures they choose are Cortex-X2, A710, and A510, just like A Gen 1. However, MediaTek does provide a better configuration than Qualcomm. Dimensity 9000 has 8 megabytes of level 3 cache, where A Gen 1 only has 6 megabytes. The system level cache of MediaTek is also larger than Qualcomm, and as you might know, cache will play a big impact on CPU performance. Besides that, MediaTek also clocked at a higher frequency. The A710 cores are at uh, 2.85 GHz, which is much higher than the 2.5 GHz on Snapdragon Agent 1. And finally, MediaTek uses TSMC 4 nanometer fabrication process instead of Samsung. If you watched our Agent 1 review, you might remember that Samsung doing a pretty bad job drawing too much power, making the phone heat up like a burner. So basically, Diamond City 9000 have a bigger CPU cache, running at a higher clock speed, and using a better manufacturing process comparing to Snapdragon Agent 1. Wow, I'm smelling an easy win right now. But to provide a better gaming experience, CPU is not the only thing to consider. We have to look at another very important factor, GPU. MediaTek has put ARM's newest Mali G710 inside the Diamond City 9000, specifically a G710 MC10. So it is a 10-core GPU clocked at 850 MHz. On G710, ARM went for a very different approach in terms of core counts. They actually put two execution units in each shader core. So G710 MC10 is more like a 20-core configuration in previous gen. But anyway, we will see if they did a decent job. Now let's pop some benchmarks. The first one we're gonna see is CPU performance using Geekbench 5. And you know what? Diamond City 9000 got 70% higher multi-core performance than Snapdragon Agent 1. Wow, this is already better than Apple's A14. While the single core performance is still not that pretty comparing with Apple's A13, it is still better than Snapdragon Agent 1. So it is the best CPU performance of Team Android right now. Nice work, MediaTek. That is pretty impressive. But it's not the whole story yet. Take a look at these wattage numbers. Even with higher performance, Diamond City 9000 still draw less power than Snapdragon Agent 1, both single core and multi core. The single core power consumption is even lower than Triple Eight. While still may not be as good as Apple, the power efficiency is pretty neat in the world of Android, and I think the credit goes to TSMC. So the CPU on Diamond City 9000 is just a beast, providing amazing performance with decent power efficiency. It really outperformed Qualcomm from every aspect. But now, let's see the GPU. Here are the results of GFX Bench Aztec Ruins. And Qualcomm defeated MediaTek on GPU this time. This is not a surprise considering Agent 1 did have a really impressive GPU. But thankfully, the gap between those two are not so huge, especially with OpenGL. If you choose Vulkan API though, Snapdragon will perform better and stretch the gap a little bit more. But nevertheless, MediaTek still managed to catch up with Apple's A14 on GPU, which is still not bad at all. And what might surprise you more is the GPU power efficiency. We recorded 8.2 watt power consumption when running GFX Bench. 
which is identical to Apple's A14, and way less than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Wow! This power efficiency number is really impressive, especially comparing with Qualcomm. And as you might know, less power means less heat, so I guess MediaTek and TSMC really figured it out. But hey, benchmarks are benchmarks, and real-world gaming are what gamers care about, right? So let's play some games. And welcome to our old friend Genshin Impact. We did some pixel count first and found out the resolution is 640p under high preset and 568p under middle preset, just like Agent 1 phones. So it will be comparable between these two. And here are the frame rates we collected. The Dimensity 9000 keeps on 60 frames per second for 7 and a half minutes and the power consumption over this period is 6.8 watts. For comparison, Snapdragon Agent 1 only lasts 3 minutes at 7.5 watts. After reaching the thermal limit, both chip goes into throttling, and interestingly, our MediaTek prototype throttles more. By the end of the test, it drops to less than 50 frames at 5.7 watts. Remember, this is a prototype machine, and they didn't put any thermal solution in it, so I won't be surprised about the throttling. So what the chart shows us is that both Qualcomm and MediaTek have the potential to reach 60 FPS in Genshin Impact this time, and it's more about thermal control when it's coming down to the final performance. But we can see that Dimensity 9000 does have a lower power consumption in gaming, and if they receive exactly the same chassis or thermal solution as Qualcomm, it might be an advantage in terms of maintaining performance. But here's the thing, although 6.8 watts might be lower than Qualcomm, it's still not a small number, and we still need decent cooling in our phones to prevent throttling. Also, we try to lower down the preset to middle in Genshin Impact to see what happens. In this case, Dimensity 9000 is running above 55 FPS on average, better than the last time. Although still a bit slower than our Snapdragon phone, the power consumption stays lower as always, so it is still a pretty decent gaming experience. Overall, Dimensity 9000 provides a beefy CPU, a good enough GPU, and most importantly, amazing power efficiency. And I would guess flagship phones using both Qualcomm and the MediaTek chip this year will have similar performance, while MediaTek stays cooler and consumes less battery life. Also remember, this is the first flagship SoC from MediaTek, and they already managed to fight back with Qualcomm, even gain an advantage in power efficiency. That is very impressive. If the retail phone can offer a better price than, let's say, Snapdragon Agent 1 phones, I would definitely consider Dimensity 9000. But on the other hand, the biggest challenge for MediaTek is not raw performance. It's about tuning and optimization by manufacturers. Some manufacturers just didn't know how to utilize MediaTek chip and did a poor job at optimizing. Well, that changed this year. Well, we're gonna have to wait for a retail phone to find out the answer. All right. That's the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please hit the like button and sub to our channel. This is Fei from GK1. Let's see you next time.